And now it's time for the latest exciting episode of Doz's Television Workshop. Hello, and welcome back to Doz's Television Workshop, where this week we've got some more B&O equipment. Uh, this time it's the Bang & Olsen B.O. System 10 radio cassette. Let's get into it. Right, well, I bought this on a bit of a whim from my mate Colin uh, about eight weeks ago, and it's been sat in the lounge and I haven't done anything with it yet. Um, it's a sort of radio cassette -y thing. It's got a few unique features, though. Um, but I'll just take you through what we've got on the front panel. Typical uh, stylish B&O looks. Um, we've got a volume slider there. One to ten. Even moves like a little scale in the perspex behind there. Uh, tape controls. The tape's all sort of stuck up and doesn't work. Uh, we've got tape. We've got aux, which I should come back to. Long, medium waves. Uh, FM, one, two, three, and FM itself. I can't seem to see the FM tuner. Oh, there it is on the back, look. So that's the manual tuner for long, medium, and FM. There are some FM presets as well. Uh, under the front panel here, uh, we've got some controls. <laughs> and I've just seen something which may give us a clue to one of the faults. Uh, we've got an acoustic mode slider. Uh, AFC for the stereo. So we've got mono, uh, stereo, stereo wide. We've got these three sort of presets here for our three FM presets on the top. A tape selector select switch, uh, ferric, chrome dioxide and metal. Uh, rather unique. Now, this has come to me with the cassette deck not working and only one channel operating. And I noticed the balance controls all the way over to the right. <laughs> Let's just put that in the middle, shall we? Is that the fault? Don't tell me. We've still got a duff cassette deck to look at. Now, that aux button, uh, we've got some speakers on the rear here. Uh, sorry, some connectors on the rear. We've got this speaker connector here, which looks a bit uh, gangrenous and horrible, to be quite honest. And we've also got uh, a pair of phonos. Now, this is the interesting thing is they're marked up tape two and phono. Does that mean this thing's got a phono stage in it? Wow. If it has, that will be something else. AC goes in there. We've got a nine volt battery connection there. And I dread to think what lurks in here. Yeah, some corrosion. That's probably what we're seeing here, isn't it? The batteries have uh, been and done their thing at some stage in their life, in its life. So I'm just going to leave that off for a minute. Um, so yeah, takes six D cells for those of us that are uh, yeah can afford such luxuries. I think it's quite a nice looking thing, really. Right, let's get a mains lead and see what it's doing first out. And if I, if I put that uh, no sound in one channel right, that'll be just a bonus, won't it? I presume it's a Telefunken style connector. So one Telefunken style, I was nicknamed the figure of eight connector. It probably has a pucker uh, IEC number, doesn't it? Not that I know that offhand. Yes, it is. That's good. Let's, uh, right, volume is on nothing. Let's just plug it in. Okay, we've got a pop from the amplifier. And yeah, we've got no right-hand channel by the sound of that. Let's see if the tuner works. Uh, yeah, well, let's turn that down before we get a copyright strike. So we've got no right-hand channel. Indeed, we don't. So, quite often, that's caused by a faulty record play switch actually in the tape deck. And unfortunately, I don't think I can do much with the tape deck because I can't get it open. So what's going on there? We have tape up when I press play. But yeah, that's, uh, it's not just catching on that door, is it? Oh, it is. So we've got some misalignment there. 
somewhere along the along the game. So I'm just going to try manipulating the record switch back and forward a few times. Just hold down start, press record. See if that solves our problem with the radio. No, doesn't appear to have done so. Um, let's just do that a little bit more. I may have to mute the sound for this bit, so bear with me one second. No. Okay, so we have issues. That cassette door is definitely lower. If you look at the gap there, the gap there, see if we can't quickly put that right, because I wonder if that just pops off the front for um, servicing purposes, and it's not quite located right. Looks right on the hinges here, but um, Quite the front perspex is not in the right place. Hmm. Can't say I'm entirely bothered by the cassette, but it'd be nice if it worked, wouldn't it? How do we organise that to move? There's a little bit of movement in the door, but nothing that I'd think would be excessive. Knowing B and O, they generally make access to cleaning heads and things quite easy. Or am I kidding myself? I can't see how that comes apart if it does. Anyway, right, let's pop it all back together, take it apart, and see if we can't solve our channel issues. Oh, right, you see that on the top camera. This gap over here is non-existent and we get quite a wide gap over there. I suspect somebody has been here before. Right, let's take these two screws out of the battery compartment and see what we can see. Oh, three screws in fact. So we've got one there. Crusty and horrible. Another one there. So. I reckon that probably hinges up and out like that. Yes, okay. Yeah, this has been a part before, hasn't it? And somebody's not done due diligence with putting it back together. Oh, right, okay. So. We've got power supply electronics in the back. And another thing going off to the... So that, I presume, is the power supply. Yeah, it's going to the batteries and everything. Uh, there's a white wire there on the antenna, which appears to come off. The FM antenna, that is. Looks like it'll just slide off with some gentle persuasion. Mm, okay. There's a load of other stuff going on down here. Oh, and there's an errant spring that has fallen out. Okay, I think I'm just going to pop this down. Have a look in the bottom. Yeah, there's a connector there. Seems to go to the battery compartment for whatever reason. Got it. Right. Oh, there's all manner of extra leads. Oh, I wonder if our speaker not working. Oh, it's stuck to the magnet on the speaker. Okay, it's got that side all off. Let us make ourselves a bit of space here. That's to our speaker connector board there. And this looks to be to our auxiliary sockets. And that is that antenna connection that I can't seem to want to remove. Got it? Okay. So, that's what we've got in there. Some unpleasant corrosion on that board. 
little power supply just a bridge rectifier there's not even a smoothing capacitor in there one takes it's in the main unit somewhere uh, a few sockets on there and that's it so okay interesting sort of waveguide business going on here presumably to try and uh, improve the performance of the the speakers right okay so hmm not quite sure where to go with this we need to clean some of this corrosion up some corrosion on this board as well um which interestingly is by that balance control although the balance control did seem to be working I think one of the things to do is going to be to remove that board and check it through. That's to our preamp. That's our FM rod antenna. Yeah, these are ah, this. These are the two speaker connections here. So um, let's just do a quick test to make sure speakers are not open circuit. At meter to ohms. That one's 3.7 ohms. This one is the same. So our speakers are in fact good. We did have all that corrosion around the speaker socket, that sub assembly. And uh, yeah, we've got corrosion all over the shop, presumably from battery leakage moons ago. I think the first thing I want to do. Is check out that speaker connection board and um, because I, I would wouldn't be surprised if that board when you plug an external speaker in mutes the internal speaker that's how I'd have done it or maybe it just puts them in parallel but parallel with two four ohm speakers it's asking for trouble isn't it um, and I want to just take that out and we'll just inspect that board although it does appear to be working right pop that up there and let's start with this board here. Yeah, some unpleasant corrosion over there. That seems to be from the preampy sort of section. So that would sort of imply that this, that our speakers run the whole length of this weird PCB here into here. And that's where the speakers connect. And look at all this corrosion over here. Um, let's just pick that off here, this bit of insulation material. Just check we haven't eaten through the copper on there. Multimeter again, continuity. Sanity check. Jolly good. So I just want to check across this PCB that we've got continuity from one end to the other. Okay. Okay. So despite the fact that this is looking unpleasant, it seems to be all right. We'll clean that up a bit later on. Now, which channel wasn't working? So it's the right channel that isn't working. And would you look at that? That speaker socket, it's the right-hand channel with all the unpleasantries going on. So let's just undo this little subboard. And yeah, the sockets have got three contacts on. Well, while they're open circuit, we should have one from the input straight to the speaker, shouldn't we? So that one's short circuit there. This one <laughs> isn't. So I reckon that's the, if there's a plug in here, disconnect the speaker's signal. And the right hand one is open circuit. Right, out it comes. And uh, it's excessively awkward. There we go. Yeah, look at that. It's as green as grass in there. I wonder if we uh, can do anything to clean that up. Or is it simply... Oh, you can see in the bottom. Let me zoom in. Let's get in there. There we go. 
you can sort of see in the bottom of that smaller contact there is like a, a contact spring in there and what's the better in that one there that's full of green new nasty is um is our problematic one right what am i going to do to clean that out let's zoom out what do we think bit of ipa in there to start mm. i think this calls for the toothbrush i wonder if i can just brush some of that corrosion out before we go mad yeah it's pretty unpleasant in there let's get a little uh, pick or something oh it's very corroded mm. I wonder if a bit of white vinegar will do it let's go and uh, investigate that in fact if I take the socket out perhaps I could immerse it in something that'll uh, just clean that up for us mm. right hold that thought malt vinegar catch up god slayer yeah that's not gonna do right i had to have a little visit to the local supermarket and uh, we've got distilled malt vinegar is that the same as white vinegar i don't know probably great for putting on your chips i have no idea right let's get that socket out and um yeah go from go from there so we want to desolder that to start with Right, chuck it in there, and we're going to chuck a little bit of distilled malt vinegar in and see if it does the job. Mm. Smells like the stuff you put on your chips, is that right? Oh, it's fizzing away. You see that? See them in a bit. Yeah, you can see that's uh, fizzing away at the corrosion a bit. Let's get my toothbrush in there. Let's just leave that in there a few minutes and see what happens. In fact, while we've got the vinegar out, just try applying a bit to these uh, battery contacts as well. It seems to be fizzing around a treat. The other end's all right. It's just uh, this end here that's bad. A little bit green, but it's not an electrical connection, so I'm not particularly bothered by it. What is this bit of corrosion on this board? I wonder if this will assist us there at all. Just a little bit. Just going to clean all that up, I think. Hmm. I think that's a job for our uh, fibre. Find a glass pencil. Just don't want that to continue eating into the board. Well, let's clean that up nicely. Let's just get a bit of IPA on there. And take that little bit off there. You still see some black under there. So, See where it's got under the solder resist and um, started to eat away at things a little. It's looking better. Just going to get a little bit of uh, 
solder resist on there. There, horrible, but it's giving it some protection. I should get the old ultraviolet curing thing. Give that a few minutes just to cure on there. Lovely. Right, let's pop back in a minute and see how that socket's doing. Right, our UV curing lamp's uh, done a sensible job on that. I may need that later, so I'm going to leave it out for now. Oops. Uh, let's just see how our socket's getting on. It's looking good, I have to say. Let me just mop off the excess of vinegar. It's only been in there a few minutes. But if the uh, corrosion has gone, we should have continuity between these two pins. No, we don't. Let us clean that up some more. Um, let's just give it a squish. One to rinse the IPA off. Uh, so not the IPA, the vinegar. Where is my uh, can of IPA gone? There we are. Give that a rinse out. We really don't want to leave the uh, vinegar on there, to be honest. It is sort of an acid, isn't it? It's acetic acid, I believe. Not that I'm a chemist, but uh, that's why it works. So there we go. Let's just see if we can manipulate the contacts slightly. Oh, it's looking good. Let's see if it's got continuity now. There's these two left most pins here as I'm looking at it. No, I think it might be dead. <laughs> I wonder if that uh, outer contact, because I can see the bottom contact is now looking clean. Let's give it a quick squib with service hole. See if that helps. I wonder if it's just lost its uh, springiness. I think it's had it. Well, there you go. So, in the event of us needing external speakers to plug into it, I've liked it to have worked, but um, it's not going to happen instantly, is it? We could start looking out for another one of those, maybe. But just for now, I'm going to short out those two contacts, I think. Unless it miraculously comes back to life in a second once I've soldered it. Just test it again, but I don't give it uh, much hope. No. Okay, so what I'm going to do is I'm just going to put a blob of solder in between those two pins just for now just to restore both speaker operation and I shall look on eBay etc to see if I can find the right kind of plug while I've got this pot of uh, stuff over here I'm actually just gonna pop those corroded screws in <laughs> gonna fizz in away it's doing the job <laughs> Right, uh, I'm not going to put it back together just yet. Oh, it can stuck to the speaker. Let's just, um, or maybe I will put it back together. It would prove out the speaker business, wouldn't it? And then maybe I can move on to this uh, cassette issue and maybe fully test the cassette unit and see what else is wrong. 
Uh, yeah, this piece of insulation needs to go back on there. Just need a little dab of glue on there. Right, that should hold that into position. If B and O deemed it necessary, so do I. Right. I think now we just sort of slip the back back on and just check we've got stereo sound. So I'm just gonna dust all this corrosion and detritus out of here. It's a shame the corrosion's got a little bit to the aluminium handle, but um, it's at the back. Nobody's ever going to see it. Don't think I'm that worried about it. Okay. So. Let's make myself some more room again. Connector with the screen leads goes to our preamp board. Connector without goes to the speakers. Oh, stubborn. It's got it. And that four pin connector goes over here somewhere. Oh, yeah. <laughs> Stand it back up right. That goes in up in there. Bit of a jaunty angle. Somebody's obviously uh, tugged at this before. Oh, could have been me when I took the back off, I suppose. What's got it? And then this one is underneath put it on its front. Probably a bit difficult for you to see on camera that one. But there we go. Right, that's in place. Let's just try and fit the back properly this time. So it's flush. Is that gonna happen? I think so. I'm not gonna put the screws in it for now. Let's uh, power it up and see if we're in stereo. And there we go, mains is on. I can confirm we're in stereo. That is both speakers working. I'll be your galaxy. Let's not leave that on for too long for fear of a copyright strike. Well, that's it all working, isn't it? Let's just check that balance control. Yep. Ah, acoustic mode appears to be some form of uh, of um, tone control. Right, so what have we got left to do? This errant cassette door, and then we can test the cassette deck. So, yeah. So clearly, if we look at this here, we've got a big gap along there. I might be better off with a light off, bear with me. Now, we've still got the reflection from the fluorescent on the roof. Uh, you can see though, there is a big gap there and there is absolutely no gap there. So that is preventing 
the cassette door from opening when this flaps shut so unless this flap is in the wrong place which it doesn't appear to be it appears that this cassette door has just dropped down but there's no real play in the hinges so it's got to be the fascia so my big question is how does the fascia undo okay well that's handy so push the two tangs in here there are two tangs look and the door hinges all the way out which is very useful oh i tell you what is that just held on with tape like a double-sided tape and it's moved i wonder Can I get my fingers in underneath it? Let's uh, just grab a cassette and see what the actual cassette is doing itself. Right, I have the workshop test cassette. Um, appears to be one in the play side B. Let's press play. Well, I've got take up. Uh, that spool appears to be moving correctly. That means we've got... Um, but it's a cassette um, we've got rewind plenty of rewind plenty of fast forward well that is good news so the cassette sort of works it does sound like it needs a head clean or something let's just get the cassette back out we deal with this door hmm so I've got two sort of welded plastic welds there and there which are holding the sort of springs on the front so what's actually holding the perspex to the frame is anything holding the perspex to the frame has somebody inex inex inexpertly glued this in times gone by i don't know i wonder if i can just gently ease a spudger in there without cracking it i don't have a good rap when it comes to this See my video on my back lights on my car. Mm. Oh, so this part is in fact see-through. So presumably it's glued up here. I wonder if some hot air would help. Trusty hot air gun. Has that eased it into submission? It is glued and taped by the look of it. No, it is tape, I think. Right. Good. So let's get this nasty tape off here. And, um, yeah. Stick a bit of new on and get it sort of aligned up in the right place. Oh, yeah, that's satisfying. Yes. tacky area there but I think the important part is we've got most of that off so that uh, when we position the door back on again it'll go into the right right position as you can see I think that sort of wants to live about there really I wonder if there's enough stick yeah there is just enough stick in there just to hold it on let me just close that for a second. There we are. Ah, get that right. There we go.
that's where it needs to be. Okay. Ooh, try to put it in again. I think I need the door open. <laughs> there we are. Okay. Double sided tape then. I've got this stuff. Um, it's quite wide, that's what worries me. I don't think we're going to get any in under here. But it should be alright for the top bit, and this stuff does stick very well. So I think we'll be alright. A little pair of scissors. I think I'm going to stick it on the lid. Let's just clean that lid. Make sure there are no unpleasant finger marks behind it. Before we... Uh, Put it back on. Yeah, there's a couple of sticky marks on there. Look from the adhesive. Let's see if IPA will help us remove those. I think that's as near as damn it I'm going to get it. Okay, so stick a bit of this on there and spend the next 20 minutes of my life trying to remove the backing paper. So, all about that much. I'm not going to bother with it going along the bottom because I don't think I'll ever manage to cut a piece down that's going to look any good. And this will hold it. Okay. So now I've got to concentrate really hard so my shakes don't mess this up. Let's just make sure that's pushed down nicely. It is. And then... Uh, Pick the edge off. Could be here a while. Try the other end because it's not going to make any difference at all. Oh, I got it. Look at that. Okay, so we're that way round. Be on the I reckon about there does that look straight to you only one way to find out let's try it door in place all the lines on the front look a lot better now. Let me just show you that. In fact, you can probably see on here that, that line is in a nice place now. That line looks a lot better. And the eject works. Fabulous. Right. Uh, while we've got this in bits, let's just clean the heads up. Uh, put the door out the way for a moment. So we're safe. Oh yeah, the heads are in a horrible condition. Can you see that in there? Let's zoom a different camera in for a change. Okay, there you go. You can see there's sort of a smeary horrible mark on there. So uh, let me get a cotton wool bud or Q-tip or whatever you want to call it. A little splash of IPA. And we'll give that a quick clean. That surface should be shiny and pleasant. And it's neither. You can see on the Q-tip there, it's starting to go a little brown. Put it into play and clean that roller up a little bit while we're here. If you put it into play, look, the roller moves so you can sort of get your Q-tip in there and let the roller do the work. And as you can see, there's some horrible brownness coming off there. 
Good, right, well, I'm happier with that now. And that tape playback was definitely much on the woolly side before, so uh, let's, uh, I'm going to clean in there just very quickly with a little brush just to make it a bit more pleasant. little IPA maybe. That lever there by the way that's for the record protect that all those internet memes are on about. That fits in like that, pushes home and closes like that that all works as intended i wonder if that's just years of gravity tugging on that tape that caused that to fall slightly all right let's try me tape again and see if it sounds less woolly this time improved for a cassette that's as good as it's gonna get well I think we fixed all our faults haven't we um, cassette didn't open sound only on one side uh, there is some corrosion to the back of that board so uh, I think I'll just take a little look at that if it's not severe I'm gonna leave it alone um, if it ever gives problems again, I have no intention of parting with this. I'm rather made up with it. So, um, yeah, let's uh, just have a little look at that. And if it isn't too bad, it's going to stay. Oh, I've got to take it back off again. <laughs> and you can see why somebody struggled to put this backpack on last time as well. Do you know what? I'm not. I'm going to leave that. It's all working. If it ever suffers again, I shall know where to look, won't I? So let's just button it up and enjoy it for what it is. Oh, those screws. Where did I put those? There. Yeah, these have had a little dose of vinegar. And, uh, oh, they're not perfect. They've sort of got a black hue to them now. They're certainly looking a lot better than they were. little bit of a clean but I want to be a bit careful of the B&O some of the writing is a bit faded already so I'm going to choose not to use service on on this one I'm going to use a RS Pro anti-static foam cleaner um, it's a bit more gentle because it doesn't have the ammonia in it that the other stuff does so uh, yeah let's just give it a quick birthday there you go nice simple repair to this bang and olsen bo system 10 radio cassettes that's about it for this week thank you for watching click like subscribe do all that rubbish and i'll see you really soon here on doz's television workshop cheers now bye Thank you.